Do you know, is it improper to wear house shoes in an apartment? <laughs> you have to get apartment shoes? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I think house shoes are okay. There's like a whole market there. They could be making like... <laughs> Besides the name, how would they differ? Um, maybe be more compact. Oh, I see. So they fit better? In, yeah, yeah. In that limited space available? <laughs> <laughs> maybe they could be connected with a little rope so you can then hang it right, right. on the wall. Yeah. Do they convert into like an ironing board or something like that? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, the ironing <laughs> board would be the best option for them. You right. know? Hi, welcome to Comic Talk. I am Jonathan Taylor Thomas of shows such as Home Improvement and other things that I've also been in. He was in the Huck Finn movie too with uh, Brad Renfro. And, yeah. Who did he play? Who did I play? Uh, Huck Finn. Oh, really? <laughs> no, he was, um, what's the little asshole kid that uh, had a family? I don't remember. Tom Sawyer? Tom Sawyer, yeah. Yeah, okay. He's a mean, mean something. Guy. Mean, is it mean, mean guy? I think so. Okay. And I, Boo Profen. <laughs> and this is our weekly comic poll list review for April 27th. Boom. <laughs> The other thing we gotta talk about is this goddamn sidekick right here because it's it's fucking amazing and it's just why don't we have one yet? I know you don't have one, or you would have posted in the comments about your sidekick and uh, you know, taking a super sweet selfie of yourself with your sidekick. Not like with your sidekick, because there's there's no camera on this one. <laughs> just you with a but sidekick. Featuring a sidekick. Right. Maybe be the correct. You, you could have somebody else with an actual camera phone take a picture of you. Yeah, do that. You get the Sidekick LX. I mean, I have the Tony Hawk signature yeah. model. Um, anyway. Is that a thing? It, it totally is. That's awesome. Of course it is. This week, we are pretty, I mean, we're, we're packed in pretty, pretty heavy here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have six titles, no, we have five titles, six comics. We will, you'll see what that means in a moment. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, which is a brand new number one issue. Uh, we have Daredevil number six, I think. We've got Karnak number three. This is actually from last week, but we got it this week. Finally, it, it was out. So now we got it. So we're going to talk about it. And we have, this is odd. We have Doctor Strange, Last Days of Magic, and uh, Doctor Strange number seven, Last Days of Magic part two. And then lastly, we'll jump over at the end and we'll talk about Batgirl number 51. Because we have so many this week, uh, it'll be kind of quick and to the point on yeah. some of these, I think. So let's get right into this. We got four kids walk into a bank. This is Boss Maurer and Rosenberg. Uh, so this is, this is Black Mask Publishing, uh, something we've... I've never read anything by Black nope. Mask. I have not. And this is a five-part uh, book here. So this is number one of five. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually saw a preview page of this uh, on Reddit, our comic books on Reddit. and uh, It looked cool, so we, there was one left on the shelf at the local shop. So mm. I snagged it. Hell yeah. Uh, so you want to kind of go over what this is about? Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... Pretty standard first issue in a lot of ways. I mean, it's not, but I mean, you get the general character development and um, the setting up of the the problem that they have at hand, the conflict and everything. So it's just you know, laying the groundwork. Right. So it's like some kids, uh, they run into some shady characters that are older. Yeah. Uh, we should and... specify it's like um, nerdy misfit kind of kids, you know, that are all friends because they're. They're all fucking weird. Yeah, they, yeah. they have a decidedly kind of freaks and geeks vibe. Definitely. I think. Uh, and this comic is very sharp, maybe a good way to put it. Did, did you get that feeling from it? How would you describe yeah. it? Well, I guess I generally equate sharp with like um, more intellectual. Mm. I mean, it was funny and it was... 
well put together and uh, the funny moments felt very like natural and you know we did a conversation perfect I mean the way that they would be in real life mm-hmm. so I don't, I don't know adjectives other than other than those to describe it yeah it's um I think what I mean is for me sharp doesn't nor it doesn't really mean like uh, highly intelligent more as uh, it gets in quick with the, it's with quick. the ideas quick you know it, yeah it comes in and jabs you with a good, uh, a good joke or a, mm-hmm. a clever way of portraying things. Like they do a lot of interesting stuff with how they portray the scenes. Right. They do a lot of stuff that you can only do really in a comic book. Uh, in some ways, it reminds me of Scott Pilgrim. I could see that. Actually, it yeah. it, it does a lot of these labeling of things. Where it's here's a character and it's got a label thing that, about him. That, yeah. that describes them. Uh, and it does the same thing with situations, too. A couple of small examples, like uh, the kid gets hit in the head with the ball that the other kid throws, and instead of, like, bamf or bonk, it says jock. Yeah. When it hits him mm-hmm. in the head, because it's, like, the jock kids. Right. Uh, and there's that sort of clever play. It's very happens, clever. Happens a lot in here. Mm-hmm. The actual... Dialogue, funny parts, I would say, are a bit more sophomoric, Mm -hmm. um, which is not necessarily bad. I mean, I laughed my ass off at this book. Yeah, I laughed quite a bit, yeah. Um, But yeah, the way that it's put together is definitely very clever. Yeah, the the art team is really clever Mm -hmm. uh, with the way they structure things. They, uh, frame-wise, there's nothing like really uh, jazzy about it, but... Uh, you know, it's all very simple, like mm-hmm. like squared out frames. But the way they play with them is really interesting too. For like sure. they'll they'll cut up a frame into six pieces, but it's all just one picture. Uh, but it's just kind of telling you where to read, right? And sure. Like keeping things clean. Yeah, yeah. Very good layout. The art itself kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Ringside. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a little weak. I, I think it's a little bit better than Ringside, and it has yeah, a little bit. It seems to go up and down in quality a lot as you read through it, like uh, uh, the important moments or things that are supposed to feel grittier or more like uh, impactful seem to be done pretty well. Mm -hmm. And then the moment to moment stuff is real sketchy and loose. Yeah. Pretty pretty cool overall. I'm glad we picked this up. I liked it quite a bit, actually. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to the next one. Good deal. Anything else? Nope. Also, what is Black Mask? Uh, anybody have any experience with this publisher? I've never even, yeah. I don't know if I've ever even come across it before. So leave us a comment if there's any other cool Black Mask stuff or like what is it about? So what like, is this publisher about? Is it like creator owned or, or what's up with it? So anyway, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, Daredevil number six. This is Sol Bufagi and Mila. What is his name? Buf- yeah, Buffon. Fogna. Buffani? Buffani, yeah. Maybe Buffani. So, Electra shows up in this one, which is tight. So, if you've just watched the Daredevil Netflix thing and you're, you're trying to get some more Electra, like, this is a good jumping on point. It's a new story arc. And uh, she's really pissed off at Daredevil. Yeah, and this is actually... I want to reinforce that you see, this is a really good jumping on point for yeah. this, I think. Uh it really sets up what's been going on. It, mm-hmm. it re-explains it mm-hmm. uh, because he's now talking to Electra, right? And he's, what he's doing like legally, and you know who his new found sidekick is, right? And, so we get a lot of chances stuff. for some real natural exposition in here. Mm-hmm. Artistically, this is a different artist, isn't it? Yeah, I like it a lot. Me too. I'm really into this guy. I think he's doing some really cool stuff. It reminds me of the. Uh, in some ways, he's pulling some of the stuff that we saw at the beginning of the Wade run back in like 2012 when Wade first picked up on it that sure. Martin, Marcos Martin was doing and uh, uh, another guy whose name I, escapes me, Paulo Riviera, I think. Reminds me a little bit of The Last Artist, too. And a, yeah, and a little bit of The Last Artist. It's a cool mixing of the two that I'm, I'm really digging. And it just has a good daredevil kind of vibe where it... Definitely. It's kind of dark and brooding and a little bit Frank Millery too. Yeah, I would dig those uh, fresh takes on traditional, yeah. so to speak. Cool stuff. Cool. Writing-wise, I feel like this is also a step up for Soul. Yeah? Yeah, I like this a bit more than I like the stuff 
from uh, the the last the five issues. Ten fingers thing. Yeah, it's a little simpler in just the way he's portraying the maybe characters is maybe a little more interesting. Less convoluted instead yeah. of simpler. Yeah, that's probably be. a better way to put mm-hmm. it. Yeah, it's a little more straightforward. Which I always think works well for Daredevil. Like he, He's yeah. a convoluted enough character as is like yeah. with his motivations and, and where he's coming mm-hmm. from and Guilt. dealing. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we can usually put him through relatively simple situations yeah. and it He's it's not interesting. the fucking Avengers, you know. You don't need to put him against like a whole fucking yeah. Right. Yeah, Give him a saying. simple problem and and watch him struggle the shit out of it. Right. That's <laughs> right, what yeah. makes him so fun to read. Usually mm-hmm. is you're just going, man. Just come on. Just yeah. It's okay. You know. So I like that a little bit better, and I think Electra is just going to be a good mix for soul i like the way he's dealing with the character and we have all this weirdness of dealing with matt's deal that he somehow made like Mm -hmm. what is this like another uh one more day kind of thing you know brand brand new day or whatever with Mm -hmm. spider-man where like i I don't know i like this one better it's pretty cool what did you think of it i'm interested to see where it goes Uh, i liked what they did with Electra quite a bit i like how they wrote Electra. I like how they wrote Matt's perspective on Electra, especially like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's a hit. I like it a lot more than Five Finger stuff, or Ten Fingers. Yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yeah, this is the best thing I think he's done so far. Mm-hmm. And it just has a good feel to it. It, it. it rolls real well through the issue, you know? Yeah. If you're a fan of Daredevil, like, you can pick this up and rest assured that this will satiate you. Yeah, yeah. agreed. All right, let's move over to an even darker and more brooding Marvel dude. This is Karnak. This is by Ellis, Bachi, and Brown. This is uh, number three, by mm-hmm. the way. So we found the kids, I guess, in the last issue, and now he's trying to get them to a place, and he gets a picture of uh, the shadow, which is like the void before the universe was created, and I guess that's probably going to be important at some point. And with this title, man, it's kind of hard because like it's so dense yeah and then there's like 17 fucking weeks between issues mm-hmm. you know and so it's like something that this is probably like a good trade read honestly that's just being like delayed, delayed. I, I agree so that's frustrating about it i like it other than that yeah and uh i like his interactions with colson being somebody who uh is invested in that character being a fan of the marvel show uh agents of shield mm. i think if you're a fan of that and you like Coulson, this is probably better than if you're not. I can see how a lot of the characterizations of Coulson could be missed because a lot of it's in the tone. You you have to know how Tulsa, Coulson would speak these lines to really understand where the draw here is of even having the character in there. Like yeah, see, I don't really see the appeal of that. He probably comes in pretty pretty bland to you, right? Right, it's like, I don't, I don't give a shit about him. Right. The thing with Coulson is he's very sarcastic, so, like, most of what he's saying here, if you read it as, like, a sarcastic 17-year-old girl, you get, like, Coulson's personality. But okay. if you read it like just standard straight guy in a suit, it doesn't make It seems just like a guy in a suit. Right. Right? So it's all in the okay. delivery with that character. Uh, and it plays well against Karnak, knowing that character's like that sarcastic 17-year-old girl. Sure, because he's absolutely not. Right, because yeah. Karnak is just such a... Super intense. Super yeah. intense, dark asshole against this really friendly, funny dude that's very sarcastic, you know? Mm-hmm. So I can see how a lot of that would be missed. Uh, nothing really happens in this issue. No, not really. They're really just kind of setting up some backstory and... Mostly just trying to get you into the character's mindset of just being right. a dark and nihilistic prick, right? Mm-hmm. The art's really good, though. It is. Yeah, the art I really enjoyed the continues art to be awesome. And this ending was really fucking dark and cool, too. Yeah. So I, I think I agree, though. Trade weight on this. If you're not already on this train, don't get on right now. Just, yeah, it's a terrible time. But, but yeah... When the trade comes out, pr- 
probably pick this up if you're into like Immortal Iron Fist. If you dug that, or like if you're into the Vision right now, this kind of I feel like is a nice book into the Vision because this is like a really nihilistic human perspective versus mm-hmm. it's really optimistic android yeah yeah but they kind of in somewhere in the same place i think it's a good uh companion piece to that probably yeah, i'm glad we're reading it i just Me need too. to fucking come out with issues on time so i can remember what the hell's going on yeah no kidding all right well let's move on i think it makes sense to just talk about both of these together yeah, that's what i was do you thinking think? too mm-hmm. how's i do it like this the other way here. yeah there you go like stage left over here so, uh, we'll talk about Doctor Strange, uh, Last Days of Magic, and this is like a one, they, they did this really weird, right? This is a one shot, and it's got uh, stories by three different people. It's Aaron, Dugan, and Robinson, and a bunch of people on art, Romero, whatever. And then this one is just your normal crew, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's just Bacallo and Aaron, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of inkers, as always. Leading up to this, it was the, uh, I don't know what the hell they called, it's spelled weird. Empirical. Yeah, the empirical, and they're going through and <clears throat> taking people's magic and shit. And so the big one, the, um, the one shot, is just a lot of instances of people with magic and then them like taking it from them. Right. So it's you build a character and then you just, you just take it down. Right. And then here we get kind of the follow-up with Doctor Strange, uh, his portion of it. Right. Right. So this one, the one shot, mostly it just made me want a monthly Doctor Voodoo book Yeah. from uh, whoever did that one, Gary Dugan. Like, can we just have Gary Dugan give us a voodoo book? Because that was fucking cool as hell, I thought. Yeah. Was that that guy that was in uh, Deadpool versus Thanos? Yeah, Gary Dugan's, I think. No, 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 uh, the... Oh, Dr. Voodoo. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, Dugan's been writing, if I'm not mistaken, a bunch of Deadpool stuff. So, okay, so yeah, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. We have, like, like, they did this clever thing where Jason Aaron is still writing all of the characters that he's writing in the main book. Uh, and they're using that to piece together as she's looking through the different tombs, uh, the people who that correlates to. And then mm. it jumps over and shows what's going on with that person. Right. Yeah, it was a very clever way to just uh, throw out a shitload of characters and build them and everything because you're learning about them as she's learning about them. Right. Uh, and in the same vein as the Dr. Voodoo, I felt like all of these were pretty cool and made me want to see a little bit more about all of the characters yeah, that we the have. the strange for- family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all of these different doctors, basically. <laughs> what, what was his name? Uh, Medico Mystico? Yeah. Right, Dr. Mystical. He was pretty awesome, too. Not as cool as Dr. Voodoo, I thought, but... Yeah, but, but he was pretty cool. There pretty was also, cool. Uh, what was the Supermanly one? Uh, no, that was in the oh, other one. Oh, yeah, he was awesome, too. Yeah. yeah I he, think that was in the other one. He though. is in the other one, strangely mm-hmm. enough. Uh, Skull or Shoal or... No, yeah, no, he, yeah it is this. Is. What is so his he's name? He's like Siberian... Doctor Strange. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was awesome, too. The manliest uh, wizard. Right? Yeah, and they talked about just, like, all of the different bears that he Killing did. bears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He killed this kind of bear and this kind of bear and this kind of bear. Yeah. Uh, so that was a lot of Without the use of, of a sidekick, which is just amazing. Like, he's, he's on his own. Yeah. Yeah, most of that was a lot of fun. Uh, again, I, James Robinson's part was kind of the least interesting to me, which is another bummer. It wasn't bad, though, by any But means. it wasn't fucking Airboy, either, yeah. was it? Yeah, it was yeah. just kind of okay. And then when we get into the main title, more awesome art, as always. I really liked in this part where they explained like the origin of the guy that's behind like all this shit. And really putting it in perspective and making him... I mean, because he's the bad guy, but it's like they gave him like a real solid, understandable motivation behind everything that he's doing. Right. You know, which is just a sign of a very like mature, nuanced book to do things like that. Like you don't just build shitty villains all the time. Sometimes you make them sympathetic because that, I mean, readers like that. Readers like us like that. Right. I also like that that's mixed with what is really a pretty like silver agey kind of bad guy. Yeah. You know, they're taking all the magic. <laughs> yeah, they're taking the magic away. They're called the empirical. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, they worship science. Yeah, and, 
And it's really almost comical and, and goofy of a, of a premise, but done in a fun way that, that has some nuance to it. Mm -hmm. And I also do like this very kind of simplistic idea of taking science so far that it becomes the exact thing that he hated in the first place. He's going mm -hmm. around and now doing exactly to the T what, what magic people did to him. What they were doing to him, and he doesn't mm -hmm. see the irony of it. And I, I think that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, yeah. You know, not as, a, not as a statement about science or religion or anything like that, but just as a storytelling device where mm -hmm. he becomes the thing he hates, you know. Definitely. So a lot of fun there, and he's, he's destroying the guy who has probably kicked the ass of the thing that killed his parents yeah. more than anything else, right? Like, and now he's after him, so it, it's a good, clever twist. Yeah, you gotta be careful with absolutes in this world. Yeah. Right. Uh, Art-wise, again, knocked out of the park. Yeah, it's, it's Piccolo doing Doctor Strange. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Last, we're going to go over to DC for our one DC title of the week. This is Batgirl number 51 by Fletcher, Carlini, Robinson, and LaPointe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we get a new story arc at uh, issue 51. So I, I'm not sure what they're going to do with this. Maybe this will just like skate by the, uh, the afterbirth thing and just keep continuing. Well, it's a, it's a two-parter. Is it a two-parter? Yeah, there's there's one more piece to this, okay. and then uh, when rebirth happens, she's going to be on like a trip through China or something, like she's leaving to go find herself. And okay. So this is setting up that that thing basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, yeah, there's there's this cult and they're after them. Um, there's a Gotham Academy tie-in, I guess. Yeah. Uh, a little tie-in heavy. Yeah. I haven't loved the last few issues of this. I haven't either. Uh, it really just feels like filler work that they're doing to get them to the end, which is a bummer because unlike a lot of people, I think we've both really liked this run, and especially like comic booky, like classic comic book people kind of talk a lot of garbage about this run and I've thought oh, that them. overall yeah. it's been really strong. Yeah. And I've always felt that most of the negativity to this is just continuity people. Like people that really don't like that Barbara Gordon like they erased all of the killing joke stuff yeah. and Oracle and mm -hmm. put her back to this. But I mean I'm one of the people and you are too where well guess what? It it's been a good read, so who cares, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's just, like, how could you discredit, like, an entire, like, 50 fucking, like, something issues of this just because, like, it ignored something? Like, I mean, that's that's absolutely absurd to me. Like, yeah, well, and it's it's like from the burn, it's it's when these guys took over, like, the Gail Simone stuff, people like that and all that. Oh, but, sure. You right. know, it, it, it's just when it changed over and became this, and mm -hmm. uh, it just has a real, there's a real knee-jerk reaction to it. I think yeah. most of the people that talk so much crap on it probably haven't even read it. But yeah, yeah, you know that's how the that thing is. about it. And it was the same thing with, um, I think the the Valentine Catwoman. Like the people that I saw when it got canceled that were like happy about it had like the stupidest fucking reasons for like not liking it. Uh, anyway, yeah, this one I feel like. Before, it was, like, in that weird in-between space of Kim Possible and some, like, really dark shit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like we're just kind of getting Kim Possible now. I do, too. Yeah. And it's With felt a tie-in like to Ben 10 or something. Right. It's felt like that for a few issues now. It's It's gotten more and more that direction. Yeah. Which worries me in regards to, like, the new series that will be starting, which is... Who is it? Like, Hope Larson or somebody pretty cool is doing it, but I'm worried that they're wanting that, them to really market it in this direction, maybe? Yeah, I mean, you know, the fact that they've mentioned stopping Batgirling all the titles just right. tells you the direction that they want you to move, and right. it's not anything that we're into, unfortunately. Yeah, so I think... I don't really even care if we read 52. Cool. Do you? Nope. Okay, so, I mean, we'll talk about it again on, on the monthly review, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't pick up 52 of Batgirl just because it's not been very good for the last few issues. Yeah. And uh, when the rebirth happens, I don't, we won't be reading it. Um, sure. 
but we might check the trade out, right? When it's maybe. when it comes out, yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, but yeah, it, Kim Possible is a good uh, description of this. If you're a 12 year old girl, you're probably still digging this, but it's no longer a multi generational, mm -hmm. cross gender sort of. The, the nuance is gone. Yeah, it's just there's no nuance. Yeah, so All right. that's that. Yeah. Uh, that well, that's that. Yeah. Is that. Yeah. So you can check back with this uh, on Mondays when we do other stuff that isn't this, but it's still comic books. So mm -hmm. if you like this, you probably like that. Uh, what are we doing this Monday? Are we going to talk about Suicide Squad? Or is that going to be a little while from now? Are we just going to hint at these people that we're going to talk about some Suicide Squad stuff? Are we going to do Suicide Squad first, or are we going to do uh, the Talks Comics about Vertigo? We can do the talks comics about Vertigo first. Okay. And you can just wait for our Suicide Squad. We're going to talk a It'll little bit. It'll another week. Yeah, yes. maybe. Maybe we'll just make you wait longer. Uh, but we're going to talk about what you should read from Suicide Squad before the movie comes out, which is still a few months away, but you got to do some reading first, you know? Right. So They've been teasing it for like 17 years now, so we, we can talk about it. Yeah, That's so awesome. we're going to talk about it and, and how it ties in and... Uh, we won't talk about the movie, really, just comic books, because this is comic talk, not movies based on comic book talk. Uh, yeah. But uh, so I think next Monday we'll probably then do another Talks Comics where we talk about Vertigo, our feelings about Vertigo's past, its future. Uh, the recent news. The recent news out about, you know, letting the vice president go. You know, our feelings about that and where we think the future of Vertigo is going. Yeah, just vertigo. 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 Thanks. <laughs>